Today's follow-up chat is with geologist Sky Cooley. Most of you know him by now. We've done a couple of videos out in the field over the last couple of years, a clastic dike video, and most recently a calcrete video. And I've been thinking about calcretes since my time with Sky a couple weeks ago. I'd like to ask him about calcretes potentially at the top of Saddle Mountains and what that means regionally. And then of course, it's been nothing but Terrace Fest 22 here in the last two weeks. In other words, I've been thinking about these terraces all through Washington, including the Great Terrace that I was up to yesterday. And I'd like to discuss a little bit further with Sky about those terraces. So thanks for joining us, and here's Sky. Are there are there calcretes? So you were showing me a couple of calcrete outcrops near Othello, and we were down low. Uh, and the previous day, I was up on top of Saddle Mountains, and I thought I saw some calcretes up there without really knowing what I was looking at. Are there calcretes up on top of Saddle Mountains? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and they're thick. And they, uh, they vary in thickness along the ridge crest, with, just like the sediments do. So there is a thin body of ringgold and then some related sediments up there that are sitting on top of the basalt. So, you know, basalt get folded and the stuff that was on top of them just sort of rode the uh, anticline up. Well, that's what I'm curious about. So let's let's slow down, at least for my brain, if you could. So what you showed me at Othello, uh, you you kept hammering the idea we were on top of the Ringgold, and those calcretes at Othello were between three and I think you said 1.8 million years ago. Is that the general time frame for the calcretes on top of Saddle Mountains as well? Yeah, I mean, we we know that there's constraints on the reason I was hammering on Ringgold is because it sets you in the stratigraphy. You can yeah. be anchored in the stratigraphy. You're not really? guessing where you are. Right. Where if you're in, you know, if you're in the Palouse Luss, it's sometimes, you know, right. you don't know where you are. Right. Um, so we know that, we know that the Ringgold sort of shut off sometime, you know, after 5 million years and people place that date uh, at different slightly different times, but it's somewhere three or four million years ago, the Ringgold system stopped being what it was and, and things changed and the river behaved differently and integrated through uh, to the ocean and it, it, big changes happened between three and four million years ago. Okay. Could the Saddle Mountains be as young as three million years because that calcrete is, is not forming until three million years ago? Yeah, so, okay, so to address the calcrete, okay, so there have been dated calcretes around, people have dated the calcretes around Pasco Basin and at Saddle Mountains, and the problem is, is because you're dealing with a sort of a freshwater system, and you've got some open system effects, and you've just got struggles dating that material, yeah. natural, inherent to the system. Yeah. Um, and so we know that they're probably the oldest calcretes are probably older than half a million years, right? Those are like minimum ages, not all the calcretes, but the oldest ones. Yeah. That that's pretty young, right? That doesn't get us into tectonics and an uplift of the of the Yakima folds, but they're sitting on top of the Yakima folds, so. Are those the same calcretes that are in the valley at Othello that we looked at? Right. That's the question, right? So if they are, remember, calcretes are just soils. So right. they're just soils forming in whatever material that they're scaffolding on, whether it's sand, whether it's loss, whether it's alluvial fan gravel, where it's a flood gravel. It doesn't matter. It's just a, a soil system that's overprinting the sediment. Yeah. What I've found is that is that all the calcretes that I've looked at here, let me just, can I show you a quick figure? Just oh, on paper. Show okay. and tell, yes. I don't know how, I don't know how this comes through, but these are stratigraphic columns of places that uh, I've documented. I don't know if you can see that or not. Pretty well, pretty well. So the point is, is there's a lot of, uh, there's a good record out there. That's why I show you this, is there's a good record of preserved, sediments with calcretes on top of those. And almost 
every place. Those calcretes are developed into alluvial sediment. A, a question that needs to be addressed in the field, and I'll be doing this shortly, and I think others have done this already, but to confirm what is the sediment, the parent material for calcretes on top of the saddle mountain. If you're calling it ringgold, it's mapped as ringgold, then the ringgold is a lowland deposit. It's not an upland deposit. It's not some dry, you know, windblown ridge deposit. It's a low alluvial floodplain, period. And those soils are developed on that alluvial plain. Mm. Good. Well, I hope you get up there and do more of that work. That would be really fun to be able to say some new things about the Saddle Mountains. Here's a wild thought. Uh, the Calcretes we were looking at in Othello had some older Ice Age flood deposits below or within or overprinted or whatever you were saying, right? I mean, yeah. is it possible there's some Ice Age flood deposits that are now on top of Saddle Mountains? Well, okay, so... Um... Let me think about that for a second. Uh, <laughs> let, let me, let me so just really, kind of walk people through maybe what, what's been done. I'm certainly not the first to find calcrete crust on top of old flood deposits. Right. Richmond in 1965 and probably Frixell before that and, and certainly Vic Baker, Richard Waite have documented calcrete encrusted old gravels. But pretty much, even George Neff, uh, Pretty much the literature is, is pretty clear that it's one or two really old floods, like like hundreds of thousands of years old. Okay. That's what we were looking at at Othello. It's yeah. that unit. Okay. Uh, possibly two units. Um, so if those same gravels were, you know, Othello is what, a few miles from the base of Saddle Mountains. Right. It's tempting. And, yeah, and if and if uh, if those gravels were laid down, and then that ridge emerged, or that part of Saddle Mountains Ridge emerged, right. yeah, you might see gravels on top of rounded cobbles on top of Saddle Mountains encrusted by the same calcrete, and that'd be quite a deal. I'm not so sure that's going to happen. I, I think the tectonics and the flood story uh, has some natural constraints on timing. I mean, we have glacial stuff that doesn't go back more than about 1.8 million in eastern Washington, and yeah. it's clear that the Saddle Mountains are older than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, good question, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm fascinated by Calcretes for the first time, and that's that's you, so thank you. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, we'll... we'll uh, you know, I'm in the zone right now with thinking about, you know, the last three million years, basically, and some of those old Ice Age floods a little bit. But obviously now, I mean, I got terraces on the brain, baby, big time. Oh, you, do. you do. I watched the video last night. Okay. And I, I so I'm, it seems like you do too, to a point. So are you actively collaborating now with, with Jerome Lessman? Well, we, we spoke uh, a few days ago, uh, okay. like, like we are now on Zoom, and it, it was great. Um, you know, we don't know each other real well, and so we've kind of been in a, a similar orbit, but just geography is, you know, I don't, how often am I going to Canada, and how often is he coming to Montana? Yeah, not very often. So, but uh, we have a lot in common, and I have a great deal of respect for what he's done. Uh, Jerome's Drum's a good geologist, period. And he's a great teacher. You've shown that. Your videos have really highlighted that, that guy's a great teacher. Yeah. Yeah. He's also got perspective on Canada, Canadian geology, the Okanagan geology up above the border, which is it's a different world up there. And I think what we see in the Scablands and even in the Okanagan of the US doesn't it's not the same beast as what's in Canada. So they're coming from a different perspective up there on, on geology, and it's an informed one, and it's a, it's a rich history of, of studying the same kind of stuff that we're used to looking at down here, but it's a different phase up there. It's a different, it's a different beast. So they come with a different – the Canadians come with a different perspective on a similar system. Mm -hmm. So Jerome and I decided to kind of um, – 
get together on the Okanagan Valley and to try to look at those terraces that you've been talking about, the, the Great Terrace. And uh, that blog post that I wrote to kind of um, uh, compile and summarize what's been done in the literature over the last 150 years was to get myself up to speed with well, what's been done. You know, that's about all it, that was. Well, that's, so, it's just so excellent. Yeah. I'm going to link to it again below, this blog post where you just – uh, it was so helpful to me, and I hope many others. But yeah, it's interesting to know you were just kind of doing that for yourself because I, I I think I need to do more reading on on the various thoughts that have been out there. But where where are you right now, especially after compiling all those previous reports on the Great Terrace? Okay, well, um, there's a few things that I want to do, and J Jerome and I will be working together. To, to answer your question, we will will definitely be working together. Um, the The questions I have are really, they're not even scientific. They're just basic, like, do the geology. So, so the first thing I want to do is map in detail the terraces between about Tenasket, a little north of Tenasket, to about Chelan. Okay. Right? Which is the heart of the Great Terrace. Um. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare a, a long profile, a longitudinal profile, the modern channel, and then all of those terrace levels. So just a, a, an elevational profile of the river itself today, and then the older river terraces, the older terraces that, um, that walk up, those stair-stepping flights that walk up the valley. Those two things are going to be illuminating, I think. I think we'll get um, some questions that develop just from doing the mapping and doing the profile work. So and those two things. As far as you know, that has not been done before. It, it really hasn't. There have been uh, looser attempts done um, by uh, Kiever and Stradling in the Upper Columbia, and some of that work has sort of marched west. But in general, no. Uh, the one thing you got to realize about the Great Terrace is it's not a single landform. It's a flight of terraces, and those terraces have different ages. And even though it's one sort of body of sediment, those terraces are very different and have very different uh, um, paths to, of, of their formation. So you have personal experience in that Okanagan Valley. Did I read that you lived in Omak for, for five years or something? Yeah. Yeah, I lived uh, just north of Omak at the airport, <laughs> this crummy little house. Oh, that was, uh, that was fun. Uh, yeah, I lived right up there at Omak um, for five years, and I worked as the soil scientist for the Colville Reservation, so from 2002 to 2007. So and did, were you thinking much about those terrace flights back then, or this is kind of a new uh, awakening? No, those terraces carry across the reservation. So even though I lived in the Okanagan Valley, you know, I would spend a lot of time in all the way over in Inchileum, which is on the upper Columbia, huh. the east side, and in the Sandpoil Valley, which is in the middle of the reservation. And that, that goes up to, to Republic. And those terraces carry across there. So these terraces are not just, the Great Terrace is sort of defined as part of the Okanagan and part of the Columbia, but in reality, those same terraces are in the Methow, they're in the Okanagan, they're in the Sandpoil, they're in the Columbia, and they're probably in other rivers around the region. I mean, that's what turns me on about this, that, that especially if you've seen these regional correlations already from your work with the tribe, I mean... Come on now, let's just continue in this in this story. I'm not pushing for one narrative, but just the fact that this is valley to valley to valley and you're finding similar deposits, that's intoxicating. Yeah. Well, I, I think I, I guess what you're you're hinting at is is there a connection between the Okanagan Valley and the Channel T plan? And uh, I wanna be I wanna be clear there that my you know, what I'm trying to do is not uh, argue or get into any so I'm not trying to rebuke what's been done in the past. I'm that's not my goal. My goal is to actually just go look. Good. And there hasn't been a lot of that in the last 125 years. There's been a lot of talk, but there hasn't been a lot of look. 
And so I think it's time to just revisit what those reconnaissance geologists started. Um, yes, there's a lot of ice marginal deposition going on. App I mean, that came terrace model fits, but does it fit everywhere? No. Yeah. Yeah. What are the contributions of, of uh, side valleys to those terraces and to the whole system? Um, how does ice on versus ice off the landscape change the hydrology? I mean, those, are, those are like fundamental questions that we really don't, we really don't know. What are the deposits that the, t that the terraces are made of? Yeah. Who's even map that stuff? So, so there's some basic stuff out there that's pretty low-hanging fruit for folks that want to spend the time to do it. And I think Jerome is the right one to do what he wants to do, and I'm just going to start real conservatively and just go map, long profile. Start there, see where we can go. And you could just do that by yourself, but what's the specific benefit of collaborating with Jerome? What is Jerome bringing to ultimately the work that you're doing? Well, he's a lot smarter than I am, and he's, <laughs> I think he's taller and better looking too. So I think, I think Jerome just adds um, – Jerome's a professor. I mean, he's, he's, he's legit. He's not like some guy. You know, he's, he's a legit dude, and he's published stuff, and he's, he's got some good data. Um, he's also got a really interesting perspective that I mentioned before. That Canadian perspective is valuable because we're in that trans. We're not on the Columbia Plateau. We're not in the basin, right? The Okanagan Valley and the Okanagan Highlands are not Columbia Plateau geology. They're different. And if you take a look at the maps, um, the, the Okanagan – is the southernmost extent of what's going on to the north, right? It's not something di yeah. Washington is just the feather edge of a big system that starts way up to the north. That, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. And we, you know, I, I've just been as ignorant as everybody else, just not even, not even letting my brain go across the border even for a second. Like it, it might as be Mars up there. I'm, I, it's just, it's just my own whatever, you know, uh, just, it, maps I draw on the chalkboard, and I always stop at the porter, man, you know. So this has just been a big leap forward for me, uh, not only um, at the most basic level with geography, but then, of course, trying to ultimately see what kind of connections there are with the channeled scab land. I know it's not the normal storyline to this point, and I'm not pushing it. I'm just, I'm just trying to learn what I can. Yeah, I, th I think that's the phase that I'm in too. I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing more about the geology. And, yeah. and I, I could care less if there's a connection between the Scablands and the terraces in the Okanagan Valley. At this point, I could care less. Yeah. Then again, you know, those giant current ripples at OMAC are pretty darn cool. And you kind of go, now, wait a minute. I was just talking with an expert that said, no, I've been looking up there for decades and I've never seen any evidence of water flowing south. And then I go, well, here, here's a picture right here, sir. And he goes, oh, well, that's new. <laughs> yeah. oh, all right, we're, we're making progress.